Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is Shadow 363 once again with a match between Killer and. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. It was Killer and. <sighs> Darn it, Killer. I thought he was his fireman. Which. Okay. It's actually Killer and. Okay, I got that wrong. Killer versus D-Deebs. Killer versus D-Deebs on Icy Run. That was a small oversight. People who are watching, who are in the 0K channel on 0K Lobby, that... Yeah. Sorry about that. I was a little bit confused. Anyway. It is going to be, like I said, Killer and DDeebs on Icy Run. Which will probably be a short game. Icy Run is a tiny map. Inexplicably used for team games all the time, but... Yeah, it's a tiny map that, that just... I'll show it to you. This is it. This is it. That's all there is. Tiny little strip of land. Now, I do like dual Icy Run pretty well, because it takes this and flips it over. We saw it earlier, but... No, Icy Run on its own is pretty small, but we'll see how it goes. So, starting up, DDeebs in the northwest corner of the map going for shield bots, while Killer in the southeast corner of the map is going for light vehicles. This goes. Killer starting out with a couple Scorchers. Looks like he's going to be fairly aggressive. Now, this map does not have a lot of metal. At all. Each metal extractor spot is two metal, and there's only about a dozen of them. So, this is a very overdrive-focused map. Deeves, on the other hand, starting with a couple... No, three bandits. He is also being fairly aggressive to start out. Which I think Killer's being aggressive. Yeah, there he goes. Gets his starting going. And, yeah, he's going to be aggressive. So, both players being quite aggressive at the start. Deeves... Going in with his bandits, Killer going in with his Scorchers. And Killer going for a Mason with more Scorchers to follow, while DDeebs continues to go for bandits, not going for any builders. Not going for any convicts whatsoever, which is a little bit surprising. Not expecting to get a convict to go over to the south metal extractor, because he... Killer is going to the northeast metal extractor, and this map, it's going to make a big difference. Due to the low number of metal extractors, the number of metal extractors you get is pretty big. You want to have them, and you want to have them quickly. Because even getting full production on a single factory takes a lot of metal extract. It takes about a third of the map just to get that. Look at the way the map is laid out. However, Scorcher's doing a fine job against the bandits. DD is having a really hard time dealing with this. Scorchers are being micro properly, walking away. However, one of the bandits just about got lucky. Kill, nearly killed the Scorcher. Got to one health. Well, three health, actually. And unable to fully finish it off. Really tricky for the bandits. They do have shorter range than the Scorchers. Not by much, mind you. The Scorchers have 270, the bandits have 240. But it's enough. It is enough. And because of that, we are seeing a bit of a problem for for DDs to break out of here. A little bit surprised he didn't go for... Let's see, what did he go for? A little bit tricky for Shieldbot Factory, honestly. Bandits aren't a bad idea. It's just getting close enough to the Scorchers to kill them is tricky. Especially when your opponent is microing really well. I mean, that was... That wasn't the best... I mean, okay. That wasn't super great micro, but it was well enough. If your opponent was microing really well, it'd be extremely difficult. Even, but even just normal, basic, standard retreat micro that's not doing anything tricky is tough to deal with the bandits. But yeah, if they can bun rush them, or if you have outlaw slowing, I mean, it's a little, outlaws are probably too expensive for this purpose. Rogues might help, but still kind of expensive... Yeah, Shieldbot versus Vehicles, that's a weird matchup. I mean, Thugs... Thugs shields are hard to deal with, in general, so that's not a bad way of kind of breaking out of... Oh, I was going to fix some stuff too, damn it. Sorry, I meant to fix a couple things before I got in here, and apparently there's some issues with this version. Is this... Oh, I should probably point out, this is actually a really old game. This is playing in version 1.2 and 5.0. And it's on the older engine version as well, which apparently is breaking some things. At any rate, this is actually a pretty good raid, though, by DD. Nonetheless, despite the age of the game, it doesn't matter so much. There are some meaningful balance changes. I can't remember what they are offhand, so it's actually changed. But likely they were with jump bots and amphibs, not as much with shields. We are still dealing with the slow pulse outlaw, so it's not... Not the Fast Pulse Outlaw from months and months ago. 
This is still Slow Pulse Outlaw. This is still... Well, I guess that's about it for really major changes here. Anyway, we do have... This is kind of tricky. Anyway, if you're wondering, yeah, Cloaky is, sorry, getting question asked about Cloakies against vehicles. Glaives are faster than bandits, so they have an easier time closing the distance against Scorchers. That's actually a really big thing about, so if you're playing Cloakies, Glaives will close the distance against Scorchers, and it's kind of even from there. Really comes down to micro. Warriors are also quite effective against Scorchers, though it's a bit hard to do that early on. Rockos aren't the best option. In large groups, they can help, but Glaives are your first choice. And then Warriors can help if you have a good position where you can place them, because the Scorchers are still more mobile than the Warriors by a wide margin. But the Glaives, I think you can keep up with the, Scor the Scorchers. Bandits cannot. Bandits have 3 speed, but I think Glaives are like 3.4 or something like that, so maybe a bit higher actually. Not sure offhand. I would have There would have to be a Cloakabout Factory built, or I'd have to check the unit guide. I'm not going to do that right now. However, a Roach is being built. Deedeebs does have that set up. So Roach coming in, that will be quite useful if he places it correctly. And the band is coming for another round, and a couple slashes are in place. The band should do fine against those. It's the Scorchers that will be a problem with, as support. And, of course, the thing is, Deedeebs doesn't want to get too close. The thing is, Scorchers do deal more damage when you're near them, so... If these bandits get too close, the Scorchers will just tear them to shreds. DDs wants to be careful about that, doesn't want to lose his bandits to that. Very key thing there. I wouldn't see it as necessarily a bad thing to just throw a couple rogues in there as a bit of distraction, just to slow down the Scorchers, because then they'd be automatically microing around the rockets. And it looks like DDs is doing exactly that, getting a couple rogues, and that will help. That's not the... It's really hard, honestly, for shield bots to get in through the Scorchers. A lot of the other shields that they have pretty much is only countered by Leveler. And Ravagers are what... Ravagers and Wolverines, that's what Killer's going for. But yeah, if you go for a Thug Ball or a Felon Ball, Levelers work against that, but that's about it. Because Leveler splash damage gets through shields. However, Ravagers and Scorchers and such, they have a harder time. Scorchers especially, because they de depend on getting close, and with all the overlapping shields, they pretty much can't do anything. However, Heat Ray does deal full damage against shields. So it doesn't matter all that much. It just comes down to numbers at that point. And Bandit's coming in here. Unfortunately, losing a lot of the number to Wolverine Mines, to Claws. As the Mines are called, and they are going down. They are being detected in time. And going down, but still kind of tricky. Down goes another Bandit. And Deedeebs is going to have a... Still a bit of a tricky time breaking out. He has taken his half of the map over. So Deedeebs is not that behind economically. In fact, he's slightly ahead. Besides Reclaim. Reclaim being one big difference. Killer, however, has been setting up a really nice power chain here. It's just barely, but he has been setting it up with these solar collectors across the map. Getting a geothermal power plant just to power those even further to get his overdrive beyond already it's one and a half times. And this is a two metal spot. It's a 3.1. 3 so Killer is depending heavily on overdrive. DDeebs doesn't have much. He has his overdrive separated quite a lot. About the same amount of power... So it probably should work out about even. But yeah, he's not overdriving a whole lot. It's only about 25% increase. Not bad, though. Still not bad. I mean, overall, he has more metal extractors being overdriven, so it's still even. DDivs is still actually slightly ahead, but it is going to come down to overdrive on this map. This map is all about overdrive, and Killer has just gotten his geothermal plant up. What he needs now is either a pylon, or a series of pylons, or a bunch of solar collectors. Probably a series of pylons would be better. Just get a few pylons across these front metal extractors, and that... That would be much more efficient. It's much more efficient to get... Like, there's diminishing returns on overdrive, so you want to spread it across the mexes. Right now, DDeebs is better spread across. He doesn't have a nice, even spread. He doesn't have all of them connected, but he does have a good spread of power regardless. So right now, they're still about even for metal. That being said, Killer moving in from the north side. He does have a couple Wolverines and Scorchers. Scorchers waiting for the Wolverines to break down the defenders before rushing in themselves. But that won't take too long. South side, you don't really see too much changing. Killer has got himself positioned pretty well. He does have some of the Scorchers. does have some of the Ravagers as well. A couple of Ravagers, three Scorchers, and a Slasher. The south side just waiting to attack. DDs, on the other hand has switched over to Felon. He is going to build a Felon Thug Ball. There are no levelers in play at all. None even planned. Just Ravager Scorchers and Wolverine. 
Wolverines would be a bit of a trick. I've never really seen them used against anything, honestly. They're very rarely used. I'm pretty sure the mines would be of some use. It's kind of a, a bit of a matter of luck, honestly, but I think they'd end up hitting the shield before they hit anything else. So they probably won't hit the felon directly unless they're fired onto it. In which case, they will do a fair amount of damage. The Wolverines could be a big threat. Felon is up and thugs are being produced. A couple of them... Oh, never mind. There's 12 being produced before the next bandit comes out. And 20 metal being poured... Yeah, no, sorry. 15 metal being poured into the factory to get that happening. No more power infrastructure, though. DDs will want to invest in more power infrastructure. FSC Killer already has, like I said, the geothermal power plant. He has about two and a half times overdrive on these metal extractors, but only on two of them. That's the only thing. That's the difference. DDs has about 25% across five metal extractors, which overall is better. But honestly, it's actually not even better. It's slightly worse, in fact. Slightly worse, FSC Killer slightly ahead, but... I think Deebs can catch up from here. He is getting a felon ball, and Killer does not have a response to it. That will work out decently well. I do think bandits... I don't know. A dozen bandits over to the southeast. Once he gets the felon ball... Actually, he already has nine. He sent these nine bandits over to the southeast. Try to break through... Actually... No, never mind. Send them to the northwest to break through the Wolverines. Right now, he has a very short window before the Wolverine mines just take over the entire area. But if he sent them in right now, or a few... Like 30 seconds ago, he would be able to just break through this pretty easily. There's a couple Ravagers, they'd go down quite quickly. The Wolverines would not last. Only one Slasher, that won't help either. But now the minefield is being built up. There's nothing using up the mines anymore, and Killer is moving in, having broken the defenses with the Wolverines. Deebs does have sufficient forces to get through this, but it is kind of a matter of breaking through the Wolverines, and it looks like Killer is about to flank. He has units along the south and north. He has a large army to the south, though. But I think he's going to flank. He will have a bit of an unpleasant surprise from the south. And the north side, not at all a problem. And Slasher goes down to the bandits. A couple bandits were lost in the process. But bandits are going through. One of them does dive to some mines, but actually only one of them does. That being said, though, there is enough firepower between the Stardust on the hill and more defenders along with the Faraday stunning them out. Those bandits did not last. However, that's not the real story. The real story is, of course... The Felon Thug Ball. There are a dozen thugs, or very nearly. There's the dozens. Twelfth thug is being built. There should be 13, actually. Oh, 16 now. Wow, okay. There'll be quite a few thugs here for DDBs. Not a bad idea. Though, admittedly, nowadays Bandit Felon Ball is more popular than the Thug Felon Ball, but this was played a month ago. But yeah, quite recently, Bandit Felon... Sorry, not Bandit Felon Ball. Convict Felon Ball. So the Felon's the only one dealing damage, and the Convicts are repairing the Felon while also helping with its shield charge. Thug Felon Ball is fairly solid, but the Convict Felon Ball does, like I said, provide the repair power. That being said, Deebs has built... I don't know if he's built a single Convict, actually, this game. I think he may have built one or two. Maybe. But I believe he's entirely been relying on his commander for production, and Wolverines at the south side are getting rid of the unpleasant surprise. Not working out too well for Deebs' defenses. And... Killer setting up his own defensive position. Now, one thing to point out is that DDBs can actually attack over the hill. Like, this hill area is pathable. It's slow, but it's pathable. Whereas for Killer, this is totally unpathable. So right now, DDBs does have a terrain advantage. And he's taking advantage of that. Going over the north hill, the northwest hill, he is going to attack directly, avoiding part of the defenses, and just going in directly to DDBs. Sorry, into Killer's forces. No, he's not. What? No, DD is not taking advantage of the hill after all going through the center instead. Why is he getting himself into a choke point? He has the terrain advantage. He can go around these hills. He doesn't need to be focused on going through the low ground choke points. He can take the high ground. This could all be his if he wanted to, but no, he's not doing, doing that, surprisingly enough. Despite the fact that all these units can, in fact, path through here. Like, red means it's just slow going. Purple means it's unpathable. But red is just slow going. It would work, however, he is going straight to the choke point. Will deal with the defenders pretty well, and that's not going to be a problem. The wolf, sorry, the claws, not wolf. The wolverine mine's going to be a problem. But the thugs are tanking all that, and actually are getting rid of a lot of this pretty well. That being said, these ravages are going to be a major problem. They aren't prioritized right now, but they are, and the felon losing a lot of shielded energy as a result. More thugs coming in here, but the thugs need to take care of the ravagers. The felon needs to take care of everything else. The ravagers have too much health for the felon to take out efficiently. Thugs, you need to... Thugs are doing their job, but they are getting clumped up. That is a bit of an unfortunate reality when dealing with shields. You do tend to get a lot of clump up because that's actually easier to work with. 
the shields overlap and then it's harder to damage them. That being said, the north side has been broken through for DD because he has a clear path along the north side and a decent army running through. Dominatrix is coming in to get rid of a thug, but it is going to go down soon after. That thug didn't do any damage. Did die though. That's that's a blow. Basically thug kill and killer just not building anything. Has two dominatrices relying on those from the looks of it to take out the thug felon ball, which is a little unfortunate for killer. He's got to get rid of these dominatrices and they're moving too fast for him. I mean, he's plowing through the terrain in the meantime, but still, they are moving too fast. Wolverine's coming to the south side, just about to break through, and once that happens, Killer's going to counterattack. Two Ravager Slasher and Scorcher should still be enough. And, oh, one of the Dominations is about to go down. If he kills that pylon, there's got to be careful about the pylon. Cannot kill it. No, it's going to kill this entire... F oh, that is huge. I mean, all the thugs were knocked down. About half the thug health was destroyed right then, as a result of destroying that pylon too close. I think Deebs forgot that the pylon had a big explosion radius. But yeah, pylons have a massive explosion radius. Nice to see that Killer did actually build the pylon, though. I didn't comment on that earlier. I kind of missed that. He didn't have enough pylons to connect to his main base. That's the one problem. But it looks like Deebs is about to break in and destroys the factory, destroys the character, destroys the entire base here. However, there is a counterattack going on. Killer coming to the south side of the map does have a Ravager. There's a couple of Wolverines as well to continue breaking through defenses. And... Another set of thugs coming in here. They should just go to defend. They should just go out, attack. Get rid of these guys. If he does that, then Deebs will have the game. Deebs has just about taken the game already. The base here nearly being taken out. We don't have a base trade situation here. D Deebs is way ahead. I mean, Killer has hardly any army. It's just a matter of these thugs moving in, and then Killer's army is going to go down, and Deebs will have this game. So he was able to get through. I mean, the Scorchers were kind of the only problem. After that point, was able to take advantage of the shields, and Killer did not have levelers in play in order to deal with those shields effectively. And units he did have just didn't do the trick. It is kind of difficult for Light Beagles to deal with shields, so overall, in terms of matchup, DDBs did get it that way. It's just early game, those Scorchers can be a bit of a pain. However, once the Thug Felon Ball came up, although this Geothermal Plant also kind of risky, he's got to be careful about that. This thing has a. See, what is it? Oh, I can't tell what its explosion radius is from here. But it's not that big. Not something to be worried about, and... Apparently, Killer just noticed his base was destroyed. So focused on his attack, and he didn't realize his base was destroyed, and decides that's that's game. So congratulations, DDeebs. Got through that, and that's it. Oh, yeah, and shields do regenerate over time. It's just that... Fel uh, someone asking in the chat. Tetrax for Burium. Asking in the chat... Shields do regenerate over time. However, felons use shields to fire. Shields are... Their shield energy is their weapon ammo. Shields do not only regenerate, they also spread regenerate. So if you have a bunch of shields connected, you can kind of see they're linked up. All these shields have about the same charge value because they basically share charge value and it works out to about the average between them. Overall, it gives you more shield energy, so all the thugs contribute to the felon's ammo as shield energy, but obviously as the felon attacks, the overall shield ball shield energy goes down, making it weaker and easier to kill. That is the trade-off with felons. They are very powerful, but if the shields are weakened, especially if they're weakened by a single heavy unit, a few tanky units will just drain the felon energy right down, which is why I was saying the Ravagers, you don't want to attack the Ravagers directly, because Ravagers, they will take all that shield energy away, and then lighter units like Scorchers, or even if you just have the Ravager Leveler. Re Levelers on their own, just sh they splash through the shields. But even just a bunch of Ravagers on their own will tear through a Thug Felon Ball after the Felon has run out of energy. And thus, the entire shield ball is out of shields. That's just one thing to point out. Anyway, that is that game. I'll have another one in just a moment that will be between Senek and Deebs. Another Deebs request, because he requested a lot of games and I was... Thank you. So I will have that up in just a moment. Continue staying tuned. <laughs> 